It is the Sports Fix here on Flow FM. River Murray football. Last weekend, there were some very important matches played. And boy, haven't we got an interesting ladder uh, as a result of round 12 of matches. Joining me on the line, Big Bruce is back. How are you, mate? Oh, mate, I'm in shock. I'm still getting over the weekend. And uh, what a big week of River Murray football it was. And uh, look, it was set up with uh, a... uh, 38-point win by Imperials over Jervois, which has shocked the competition after Imperials didn't give a yelp the week before. Taylor and Ben absolutely annihilated Ramblers, which is what I predicted on the Friday night footy show. Uh, they went ran out winners by 115 points. And in the other match, Manham cruised to a pretty easy win over Maipo by 67 points in round 12 of River Murray. They did. They've locked up uh, the top five now. It's in what order? We sort of mentioned that this is what well, we've been talking about this for a while. But look, let's let's go back to the start. Let's start with uh, the top of the table clash. So Jervois and Imperials. Uh, you mm-hmm. mentioned Imperials didn't really give a yelp the previous week. Well, they gave more than a yelp here. Uh, they were behind a quarter time, but from that point on, uh, they pretty much owned the contest. Uh, they led at every change, second, third, and then uh, obviously at full time. And uh, Johnny Boris came back to some sort of form up forward. Yeah, he certainly did. He, he only managed four. But uh, look, uh, before we go too far, we, we better say for those Jervois supporters that are just uh, yelling at their uh, their device that uh, uh, they did have, they want us to say this, these Jervois supporters, they did have some uh, first choice players out in the likes of their big ruckman, uh, Tony Gibson, uh, the two love boys. You know, give the ball to them anywhere from 60 metres and they'll kick a goal. So they're big out the likes of Owen Love and uh, Ray Love. So, uh, you know, they did have some uh, big game players out the blood. But, uh, look, take nothing away from Imperials. Dwayne Wilson was absolutely electric, uh, played his best game for the club. Lewis D. Michelle took control in the ruck. And uh, Harley Montgomery, well, he's probably got a sore throat because... Uh, D. Michelle just whacked them down to him every time and uh, they just had too much control. The Blues, their goal kickers, as you said, Johnny Boris kicked four, as did Sam D. Michelle. Good return to form for him. Uh, four apiece. Montgomery uh, running down, uh, uh, roving and forward, kicked a couple and uh, the rest of them were made up from Luke Harrifield. So he finished with uh, three. So not a lot of goal kickers, all multiples. And uh, that was probably Luke Harrifield's best uh, performance around the goal front uh, or near the goal front this season for uh, Jervois. Well, Josh Scott battled hard again uh, in a great uh, lone hand. He kicked six and was named their best player. Mackenzie Hansen down back and Mitch Noy uh, across that half back line were under uh, siege. And uh, they were amongst Jervois' best. As I said, Scott with six and singles to Mackenzie Hansen, Dylan Barry. And Tate Silverlock, good to see him back in that Jervois lineup. But at the end of the day, uh, Imperials came to play. They did. Uh, Scott now, after just seven games played this year, has kicked 34 goals, if you don't mind. So he's averaging just a tick under five goals a game. So when you say he was the lone hand up forward, I won't say he's been the lone hand all year for Jervois, but uh, he's certainly been their main man when he's been in the side. He certainly has, and uh, when you uh, you analyse that um, goal kicking list, uh, you know for Jervois, uh, we've got that right on hand here, mate. You know how good I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, uh, when you have a look at that goal kicking list for um, for Jervois, um, Scott, as you said up top with thirty four, his nearest rival is Will Will, Far- Will Farrell with fifteen, and Owen Love with fifteen, Dylan Barry with fourteen. Uh, for Imperials, uh, look at their goal kickers. Well, Boris right out in front with 41, Sam D. Michelle 17, and it's pretty much uh, after that who's left because uh, uh, down into the singles with uh, Montgomery with eight. So uh, there's a little bit of a breakdown of the goal kickers. Well, there were plenty of goal kickers at Tail and Bend on the weekend um, for both sides, to be fair. Uh, good entertainment. Uh, I've always said if you're going to be the bottom side and you're going to cop a hiding, Kick some goals while you're doing it. Well, Ramblers copped the hiding. Um, they went down by over 100 points. But they put on 12 goals, 11 themselves. So they would have come off the ground reasonably happy with what they did down the attacking end. But, um, well, uh, there were plenty of goals flying over their heads down the defensive end too. 
Yeah, well, it was a respective performance, I suppose, from Rambler's point of view. And uh, look, we've spoken about uh, on the uh, Flow Friday Night Footy Show about uh, the fact that I've been expecting Rambler's to be belted like this in a couple of other games, but uh, they've uh, held their heads high and uh, but not on Saturday where uh, Taylor and Bend at home. You always expect there at uh, the toy ground, uh, it, it's uh, a little bit high scoring. And it was on this occasion with uh, some multiples from Connor Smelt with six and Stephen Clay also with six. Uh, Lockie Jones, who's been a big find for them, a big recruit this year with four. And uh, Keelan White, who's uh, been at Imps and back to uh, Talem and back to Imps and back to Talem. He also got amongst the goals back into the league side with four. And uh, Nate Chandler, only a couple of A-grade games under his belt. He had a good, his best A-grade game with three and uh, some uh, other multiples there with a couple for uh, for Ramblers. Well, as you said, the 12 is a pretty good effort, and uh, Alex Pfeiffer went forward. Uh, normally, uh, you'd put the sheet up, you know, the team sheet on the table, and you'd write Alex Pfeiffer and it's in our back first up. But obviously, he went forward and kicked three, and he was their only multiple main goal scorer. Matthew Brooks kicked a couple, and the rest all singles. Alex Pfeiffer oh, just dominated. Look, he must have dominated because um, I see in the uh, in the River Murray votes, um, Ramblers went down, as we said, by 115 points, and he managed to score uh, two votes in the match. So uh, that is uh, phenomenal for a massive loss to still feature in the votes. So uh, he didn't make my vote uh, that high, but, uh, um, yeah, a good performance by him. Uh, Jones, as I said before, named Talem's best with Finney and Thomas. Um, and for uh, Ramblers, Pfeiffer, Pratt and Haradine, names we're seeing regularly every week. Indeed, mate. And uh, what about that second half? Talk about free-flowing footy. Taylor Ben kicked 16 goals in the second half. Ramblers kicked 10. So uh, you got your money's worth if you went to watch those two play. Yeah, 26 and a half, not a bad effort, and uh, 15 to 2. Well, it was all over at half time, 15 goals to 2. And, uh, well, let's not forget the first quarter either, Jason. Taylor Ben came out and just jumped Rambles with a 10 goal first quarter. So uh, mm. they really did start from the get go. And, uh, look, that's the tip of mine, Jason. That, you did, you've sort of been keeping quiet there in the background. Uh, that little tip of mine of Taylor Ben, hey, that's starting to look good now. Let's uh, just get through this next game and then we'll have a look at the premiership table. Well, we will, but uh, we'll see if they can get any higher than third. That's as high as they've <laughs> been so far this year. But uh, uh, we'll finish off by looking at Manham, who did what they had to do against My Polonga 15, 20, 110, Maipo 6, 7, 43. They're gone now, Maipo. Uh, Manham will play finals. It's just a matter of uh, how far up the ladder they'll rise. Yeah, I think you can be pretty sure that uh, Meningi and Maipo, uh, sorry, Meningi and Manham will play in that elimination final. I find it hard to see them getting up and pushing up into the top three. Um, yeah, Maipo definitely gone. That was their last roll of the dice. Never really in the match. Uh, quarter time five to one, half time eight to three, all over. Catch up footy from there. Um, Manham came out and steadied the ship in the premiership quarter, 12 to six at three quarter time. And eventually ran out winners 15, 20 to 6, 7. They named as their better players Zach Ballard, having a good season for the Roos. Bryce Jentz uh, down back. Dylan Ribbons just anywhere on ball forward uh, in amongst the best. Whilst for uh, Michael Longer, gee, hasn't Stephen Mills been a very handy pickup? He has just been in everything every week. And uh, he eventually, uh, a lone hand, kicked four goals uh, for them. Let's. Uh, have a little bit of a look at Stephen Mills while we're talking about him in his season with the best players. He's been in those best players uh, three times from eight matches and he certainly has been uh, a real standout for uh, for the uh, Maipo longer side. But uh, look, uh, take nothing away from Maipo. It's a rebuild year for them and I'd expect with the youngsters they've got coming through, they'll be much improved next year. Um but, uh, yeah, they weren't good enough last weekend. Let's have a look at those better players. Uh, for their Mills, Fritchley, a young lad coming through. And Henry Payne, only about his uh, third or fourth A-grade uh, game of footy, um, also coming through the ranks there, uh, playing his juniors out there. So some good young kids coming through for Maipo. Goal kickers, well, uh, they had uh, quite a few uh, 
for uh, Man of Mahabi to a couple of young guns back from Sturt, and that made a big difference. Chad Reshke, remember that name? He's going to be an absolute gun. He kicked five, as did Dylan Ribbons, and they were the multiples, whilst, as we said, Mills, pretty good effort in a day out. Four out of the six goals for Maipo to uh, be a good shining light. Absolutely, mate. So, uh, look, um, I think when it comes to uh, River Murray footy, the ladder is of all importance. So we'll have a quick look at the ladder. We'll obviously preview matches um, properly on the Flow Friday Night Sports Show. But, look, the reality is top three positions all on the same record, only percentage separating them. Yeah, well, I'm feeling a lot happier now, Jason, as I said before, uh, Tail and Ben, that uh, just slipped into a little bit of a lap, but they've come good in the last two or three weeks whilst um, Jervois and Imps have lost a couple of games over that time. And uh, all of a sudden we see after uh, 10 matches uh, played for each team, uh, including the buys, um, it is a 7-3 ratio. Jervois on top with the Imperials in second spot and uh, Tail and Bend in third spot. Now, uh, you might just have a quick look at the uh, percentages there on those now, uh, We'll go with the, the percentages, the old way of working the percentage out. Gerbil is on top with 59.94. Imperial's in second place with 58.52. So not a lot in that. And Tail and Ben in third place with 53 even. So uh, not a lot in the percentages. Uh, so, you know, that's going to come down to it, uh, I would think, in this second uh, part of the season. Uh, from here, well anyone's guess, isn't it? But uh, I still think Jervois will get top. I think Tail and Ben can sneak in second and Imperial third with Manham and uh, Meningi in those fourth and fifth places uh, respectively. But uh, look, uh, it is a very close, and I've looked around a lot of country footy and uh, we're seeing that a lot along a lot of the tables that uh, it's a three-way tie in quite a few competitions. That's true. Um, I'll tell you what, we've got Manham and Meningi who'll be fighting it out for uh fourth and fifth, but they're only a game and a half away from the top three, and uh, we'll have a look at who's playing who in a minute. So they're not out of the uh, the the shooting game when it comes to a top three berth either. So that's not set in stone yet. Um, there's still plenty of water to go under the bridge, and two very important games this weekend that are going to have a bit of a say in where Manham and Meningi can rise to. Yes, Imperials, let's have a look at round 13. Uh, briefly, Imperials are at home to my Palonga. Well, you'd probably put the rent on Imperials there to get the points uh, led by... They could have uh, Clint DeMont back, which would be pretty handy, and Ben Gogol, so through their big imports this season. So uh, that will make a huge difference, and that they should be uh, too good. Probably the main factor in this one will be uh, if Ben Gogol plays up against his old side, Maya Palunga, so that could have um, some good uh, sparring in that match. But, uh, look, they should be too good, the Blues. Jervois take on Manham at uh, the home of Fly Park uh, for back-to-back home games for the Bloods. And uh, probably what is considered to be the match of the round, um, it will be an absolute thriller there. Manham will be looking to, uh, well, it's probably a, a last roll of the dice, as we say, to try and get that third spot. Um because the top teams are going to pull away one more after this week if they all win and probably make it pretty hard for Meningi and Manham. So my prediction there, I think uh, Jervois should be too good and they could see the return of uh, Owen Love and Tony Gibson. So that could make things hard for Manham. Manham could be without to the likes of Reshke and Declan Gladigo. They could be back at Sturt. So... Uh, a fair chance there, Jervois. In the last game, Meningi take on Tail and Ben down at Fair Park. And uh, this will be, again, another match of the day. Um, probably Meningi's last roll of the dice at getting a third spot. Look, you'd probably fancy them down there, wouldn't you, Jay? I do, um, against Tail and Ben. Um, I think they're a good chance to uh, uh, to just make your uh, early season tip look a little bit ragged, mate. And, of course, it's the Indigenous round, so... Yes. Um, get on uh, the Facebook page, Murray Lance Football and Netball Sporting Results. A great article written there by myself um, a couple of years ago, I might add, um, on uh, the Indigenous players that have uh, graced the, the River Murray Football League ovals over many, many years. And there just has been some absolute brilliant players. And uh, look, uh, this is the Indigenous round and uh, the main setting, Meningi taking on Tail and Ben, where there has been um, lots of great Indigenous players out of these two clubs 
and uh, look, uh, should be an absolute uh, beauty this one. Look, tipping a winner uh, without uh, too much information on uh, who's playing, look, I think you'd have to go for Tail and Ben. Winning form is good form, and they are in tremendous form and come off a couple of really good wins in the last fortnight. So uh, my money's on Tail and Ben, but it should be an absolute thriller down there at Fair Park. Should be, mate. All right, well, we'll catch up again on Friday for the Flow Friday Night Sports Show. Look forward to it, mate. Good job. Thanks, mate. We'll see you then.